Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, we have a special guest here today. She's my co-host for Coffee Breaks. Please welcome Angela Andrew. Hello, Angela. Hey, hey Vanelli. Good hey, to see moment. you. Let me pull you up here. All right. Yes, Skype. Um, so it's cool that when we're working together, here we go. There she is. So um, you know how Skype works when it bogs down your whole system. So here she is. You're on oh, yeah. screen now. So Angel, what's our awesome. topic Hey, everyone. Today? Our topic today is how to remove color casts from scanned photos. So I got this question from one of um, our members of our Skyland Photography Facebook group, and she sent me a couple of images that she had scanned family photos, a project she's working on, and wanted to know how to deal with these color casts so she could best preserve the memories. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, Andrew, we're, we're going to start in just a couple seconds. Um, we're just waiting for other people to join us. And All right. There we go. One moment. And this is the image I'm showing right now that you're going to change, and you're going to apply. Um, and again, this this is going to work not just for that scanned photo because we had a, that scanned photo had a really bad red tint that you're going to do miracles. Right. On. This could also yes. work. Let's say we're photographing a subject um, outdoor. And you have this beautiful green foliage, and that green cast goes on the subject. These techniques that Angela is going to show you can also be applied to that too. All right. Now, before Absolutely. we begin, yep, before we begin, let's just take a moment and thank our partner. One second. And this is back on me. Here we go. Okay. Yep. Yeah, for whatever, uh, uh, Skype is definitely bogging down the system. Uh-oh. Yep. yep, and Robert made the comment that he also gets a lot of bad color noise in shadows, which we'll address in a moment. All right, here we go. Definitely. So, Angela, you know what? Let's do this. One moment. Oh, I'm sorry. It's right here. Ready? Good, and that was just a reminder, Fuji, for us to stay safe, stay creative, and stay at home. All right, Angela, I'm going to share your screen now. And All right. Do it manually. Here we are. Good, we have your screen up now. All right. So we have an image up here that was submitted by Eileen Sokol. Like I said a moment ago, she's a member of our Skyland Photography Facebook group. And this um, image is of her partner, who is this young lady right here. Yep, I'm sorry, and I'm guessing the moment. grandfather and possibly a brother. Yep, I'm sorry, just Go one ahead. moment. All right. Yep, for whatever reason, we, I lost your screen. Let me get it back up. Oh, there it is, I got it back now. Oh, I had it. All right. <laughs> Let's see, as long as I don't push any buttons. There we go. And so I'm so sorry about that, Angela. So fire away about this image. All right. So um, what I love about this image is it has a very Norman Rockwell quality to it. And I love how the grandfather is looking down on the kids. You can just you can see the love and family togetherness out in the, you know, I'm guessing it looks kind of almost like it could be like the Grand Canyon or something out enjoying nature. And it's just such a classic image. But let me show you what the original looked like, because it had a horrible color cast. So there's the original. Wow. And here's what, what I was able to do with it. So in addition to taking off the color cast, I worked with a little bit of the noise and was able to open up the shadows a little bit. So let me show you how I did it. I'll go ahead and go down to my history, go down to the original, and we'll go ahead and walk through this. So I'm gonna start in essentials and go first to our color tool. And we have this handy slider here called remove color cast. So I'm gonna bring that all the way up to 100. And that in itself is gonna help a lot. So let's take a look at the before and the after. But we can do better. I'm gonna go into advanced settings and into the red channel. I'm gonna pull down on my red saturation. Right about there looks good. And I'm also going to, let's see here. Let's go ahead and increase the vibrance here. Actually, let's see here. Sorry, I made some really detailed notes for myself because I love the way the first image came out. So I'm just trying to kind of follow along with my original plan. It's here. funny you're saying that because I tried to recreate it four or five times. 
And, and each time I yeah, do it's, slightly it's different. Yeah, it's kind of hard. <laughs> exactly. All right, so we did the remove color cast. We moved, pulled down the red saturation and we added some vibrance. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is details enhancer. And let's go down to the details enhancer. And I'm gonna forego doing small details because if we zoom in on this image, it has a lot of artifacts going on. We have some of this banding in the sky. You can tell it was, you know, an old film image. There's some grain. I don't wanna enhance those artifacts and those details. So I'm gonna do just medium and large details. Just a tiny bit, just to bring a little bit of extra detail into the image. So let's take a look at that before and after. It just sharpens it up a tiny bit. Now let's go up, go, go down here to our denoise. And like I said, we have some noise and some artifacts in this image, but it's most obvious here in the light areas. While we do have some noise here on the skin and whatnot, I don't wanna to do too much noise reduction because we're gonna end up losing detail. So if I bring that luminosity denoise up, so probably right about there, you can see we're starting to lose detail in the skin around the eyes and whatnot, and everything starts to get a little muddled and soft. So in order to correct that, I'm gonna make a luminosity mask. I'll go down here to edit mask and choose luminosity. And what that's gonna do is apply all of that softening just to the lighter areas of the image and help us preserve some of the detail here in the face and the skin and the darker areas. Now, noise reduction is a trade-off. You're gonna exchange some of the noise for a loss of a little bit of detail, which is why I decided to keep that out of the darker tones and apply it to the lighter tones. All right, zoom back out and let's go up to the light tool and work a little bit with our smart contrast. So if we pull this to the right, we start actually losing some detail in our shadows. I'm actually gonna pull this to the left and this starts opening up some of those shadows a little bit. We don't wanna go too far because we're not trying to make the image really flat, but by opening up those shadows a little bit, it just makes the image come a little bit more alive. So let's take a look at how far we've come. Here's the before and here's the after. Pretty big difference. I'm gonna make one more small adjustment using the photo filter and the Pro Tools. And this is gonna help us further correct the color even more. So here in Photo Filter, I'm gonna bring this amount up. I'm gonna bring it up pretty high. And right now we're gonna just see this other color cast that it's adding, but we can use the Hue slider to select a different tone. And I'm gonna say probably right about there is good. And then we can increase or decrease the saturation. So I'm gonna bring that down to right about there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the before and the after. It just kind of canceled out some of those red tones and we still have that warmth, but without so much of the red. So we can even adjust this a little further, maybe bring that down a little bit more. I think that looks great. So now that we've gotten this image where we like it, we can then take other scanned images that we've done. So here's another one. Let me go ahead and reset this one go back to the original. And you can see it also had that really dark red color cast. We can right click on the image that we've already edited, go into adjustments, copy adjustments, then go up to the one that needs the adjustments. We can right click on that one, go to adjustments and paste adjustments. So now all of those changes we just made to the first one, we can apply to any of them that have a very similar color cast. You can also save it as a look and use that later on in your image as well. So pretty quick and easy. Um, just to kind of recap, if we go back to the original one, we did the uh, color tool and did the remove color cast. We worked with here in color, we went into our advanced settings and worked with our reds. We did some details, did some noise reduction, and then did that final touch with the photo filter. Additionally, um, when I presented this one over on Facebook, some people wanted to do a sky replacement up here. You can certainly do that. Just make sure it doesn't compete with your subject because this relationship here between the grandfather and the grandkids is what's really important. So you do a sky replacement out here. Sure, you can get rid of some of this banding, but you don't want it to override your story. So that's my two cents on that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope it's useful to you in preserving your own family memories. Hey, perfect. Well, hey, thank you. We're, we're both on the screen together. Um, yeah, because there was right. one thing Julie asked is, could you replace the sky? And you addressed that issue. So that was great. Um, yeah, you and I went down the same path. We went down the same path of editing. The only difference that I did was I used the advanced contrast. 
Okay. I use the I use the advanced contrast, and you use the luminosity mask. I use the luminosity mask, and I use the smart contrast in the light panel. Exactly. So, so here's what's okay. really cool is, and that that took a matter of a few. I mean, it took longer for you to talk about it than it did for you to actually <laughs> do it. So, but yeah. keep in mind, the whole purpose of the software is to have you do quick edits very fast. In this case. This was, we had to repair the product, for, or repair the photo first, then we start to apply creative editing and stuff to it if we wanted to. So, I mean, this would look great also as a nice black and white. Um, I just, yes. overall, I loved, I thought this was part of your family. No, no, this is from Eileen Sokol. And she was kind enough to let me work on this image that, like I said, this is her partner here in the middle. Cool. So... It was just a fun image, kind of a cool connection. And I love when people send me their work and say, hey, how can I fix this? What can I do better? Exactly. It really makes our job, Vanelli, so much easier because it gives us something to talk about on these shows because the whole goal is helping our watchers, help exactly. us, help, helping our viewers make their workflows easier. And Robert made a comment. Said, well, what about starting with a look? Yes. <clears throat> One of the looks that you could Absolutely. start with is remove color cast. And that's under the, let me pull it up. And I'll share my screen for a moment. Right. Um, yeah. Is that so, under essentials? Let me see if my, yep, my screen popped up here. It is. So, yeah, so you have it right here under the essential tools, remove color cast. So you could start with that. Um, Robert sure. was asking. You could start with that, but I would crank that sucker way up, like you said, Angela, to 100. And then um, the red is where we needed to bring back that saturation a bit. So. Right. Yep, so let me see if I can switch back to both of us at the same time. So one there other thing I would do is if, if this was my image, um, and it would have taken a little bit of time to do during a live presentation was to go in there with either the erase tool or the clone and stamp and get some of those spots out of the sky. Exactly. I would have worked a little bit more on that just before I you know, put it into my file, my archives, but that was, you know, that's a kind of a tedious process. It takes a bit of time. So, but it's worth and, mentioning if you have tears in your photos or, you know, dust spots, you can definitely go in and address those. Yeah. And I'll keep in mind that, that was a bad scan, right? I mean, it was probably somebody going through it, you know, or somebody probably took it to Kinko's and did a real quick scan and had, had the light bleed coming in through. And that's why it caused it, you know, some, some of the issues. Gotcha. But um, if they start with a better scan, then our job would have been a lot easier on this end, right? Well, I think the the user who sent me the image, she was using a, um, a scan application on her phone. I want to say it was an iPhone, okay. but I can't remember for sure. I mean, well, think about so it. She, That's she still was pretty impressive. The results, it just had the bad color cast. All right, so Angela, at 5.30, what's happening today? Today we have our Luminar Happy Hour. So <laughs> in just uh, about 15 minutes, we'll be live on Zoom. And you can pop in, ask us questions, talk to Vanelli and I live. And we always love to hear from you. Yep. And so and all that information is in the description below. Um, just click on Zoom, register quick, and we'll be seeing you guys in 15 minutes. Let's see. Um, yes, where might you first insert looks in the editing process? Good. So that, um, Dennis brought out a good point. And let me see if I can pull this up. There we go. So Dennis is asking, um, when would you put to insert the look in the editing process. And by now, I'm hoping everyone knows the moment you start editing anything in your tools and then you apply a look, everything you just edited gets overwritten. So exactly. the way around that is to either start with a look first or if you already have some killer um, uh, settings that you did, save that as a look or add a new adjustment layer and then apply a look from there. So a lot of times I'll do that with exactly. black and whites. You know, if I get my image looking really good in color, I want to see what it will look like in black and white. I make a whole new adjustment layer and then just play with what it would look like in black and white. So, yep. all right, Angela. Well, hey, thank you so much. And I really appreciate you You're being here. And I, and I love having you in on Wednesdays. What we're doing there um, midweek, right? Um, to yep. where... <laughs> uh, I'm your, you're my guest. And then when was I going to be your guest? On Fridays or Mondays? 
Uh, we didn't set it up an actual day, and it'll probably be after I get back from uh, my time off. Yes, taking so a couple be, of weeks off. Be gone and... for a couple weeks, and you'll be back, and we'll have yep. a great time. And um, Angela <laughs> has been killing herself recording some killer content for you. We'll play that, and then hopefully we'll have Michelle step in on some of the other days that you're not available. Well, you won't be available. All right? So, <laughs> hey, guys, thank you so much, and we'll see you real soon. And let's hope that this is working. Bye, everyone. Not, you bet. Let's see. Not yet. <laughs> there it is.